Hello everybody, Dan here. Welcome back to Daily Soap Dish. If you're new here, please hit that subscribe button down below because we cover a ton of 90 Day Fiance right here on the channel. All right, so let's get into it, guys. Today we're going to be talking about a couple that we haven't spoken about in some time, and that's Nikki Exotica and now her ex, Justin Shutankov, aka, uh, well, Igor Shutankov, aka Justin, I should say. Always gets confusing when I talk about Igor, aka Justin, because Nikki put on the Justin moniker, Justin nickname on him because she thought that he looked like Justin Timberlake or something like that. And so it always got really confusing because he even kind of used that nickname on Instagram. I think he changed it. Uh, and so everything's more clear now. Igor Shutankov and this couple was a complete and utter disaster from the moment that we saw them and there were a disaster even when they met some 17 years 15 or 17 years prior it didn't work out uh Igor came to the USA it just didn't work out it was very obvious to me and I think to everybody watching I'm sure to you guys as well that you know uh Justin aka Igor was just not into the trans thing. He just was not attracted to Nikki from the very first episode. And as a result, it felt like this was a complete waste of her time, a total fake storyline, in my opinion. And so it just dragged on this whole season, and eventually they called it quits, which is not really a shocker to anybody. So why exactly did they call it quits? Let's talk a little bit about this. Let's see what's going on with these two. So let's go and check out uh, this piece right here from screen rant and uh, the real reason why Igor Shutenkov broke up dumped Nikki Exotica so uh, Igor aka Justin Moldova sent Nikki Exotica a shocking text to break up with her he's finally revealing the reason why so he says Justin ended things with uh, Nikki over text and cited the need for stability in their relationship Nikki and Justin reconciled briefly but Justin struggled with Nikki's transgender identity Nikki eventually pulled Justin's K-1 visa and that's basically the end of the relationship for good. And of course, I don't think there's going to be a third time's the charm for these two. I think second time is a disaster is enough for Igor and for Nikki. And of course, we know, guys, you, you guys know we've spoken about this before, but this is not Nikki's first rodeo in terms of reality TV. She's been on and even try, she's been on, uh, I believe, multiple reality TV shows, and she's even tried to produce her own. And so very uh, desperate, very thirsty for attention, Nikki Exotica, which is also why I never believed the storyline from the get go. And I always thought that it was fake because Nikki was just so desperate to be on TV no matter what it was. And I think that's how this whole relationship with Igor, uh, at least the second go round of this relationship happened was basically, uh, you know, Nikki and Igor deciding that they wanted both fame and uh, they were go going to try to rekindle, at least for the cameras, their past relationship, even though they were, there was nothing there. There was nothing there between the two of them. So Igor uh, is revealing the real reason behind his split with Nikki. Nikki from Hoboken, New Jersey, went to Chisinau, Moldova in 2006 to meet her then-boyfriend, who she realized was cheating on her. Nikki was 30 at the time and met the 20-year-old Justin on a friendship website, but did not tell Justin she was transgender. Now, Justin proposed to Nikki two years later, and Justin came to the U.S. on a K-1 visa. Within two weeks of his arrival, the couple started having fights. During one such argument, Nikki accidentally told Justin she used to be a man. And by the way, I'm just going to correct this. She didn't accidentally tell Justin she used to be a man. She purposefully told Justin she used to be a man to try to hurt him and get the upper hand in the argument. And it's something that I've really struggled with, Nikki, uh, this whole season, you know, just trying basically to hurt Justin, trying to keep the real uh, the, the reality away from Justin and then basically drop the reality on him at a moment that he was vulnerable, at a moment that he would hurt him. I think it's the ultimate act of betrayal just completely disgusting by nikki exotica and uh honestly i think it just it paints her in a very negative light and it makes her not a good spokesmodel for the transgender community in my opinion so justin was traumatized justin took several years to come to terms with nikki's sexual identity the couple reconciled 15 years later nikki applied for justin's visa again and went to meet him in moldova there justin admitted that he had slept with other women up until he and Nikki got engaged. 
Justin also suggested the idea of a threesome. However, Justin um, convinced Nikki to stay engaged even though he struggled to accept Nikki was a woman. Nikki and Justin parted ways on a happy note. Justin claimed he wanted stability in the relationship. Justin had split with Nikki over a text message. So Nikki arrived to do an interview two weeks after she came home from Moldova. While there, she received a text from Justin and broke down in tears. Nikki was asked if she wanted to go home, but she agreed to continue filming her interview. Amid crying, she revealed that she'd gotten into a bad fight with Justin because he had not had a job and Nikki had been supporting him with money the whole time. Nikki had sent Justin money whenever he needed help. She sent him $2,000 and accused him of using her for money. Nikki said Justin expected her to squash the argument as usual, but she did not. Given all the circumstances, I have come to a sad conclusion that our relationship cannot continue. Justin wrote. Justin sent Nikki a long text message to break up with her. He wrote that he had compromised and sacrificed his own interest by shocking his parents and everyone around him. Justin said he had sacrificed his status and dignity to be with Nikki. That's a harsh one. That's a harsh that's a harsh message to send to Nikki. He wrote that he couldn't continue doing it. He wanted to control his own life now. And in order for uh, to rectify the situation, he needed to split up with Nikki. She expected him uh, to at least FaceTime her. Nikki said that she was beyond broken as she was planning a future with Justin. She thought Justin would call her to Moldova to talk to her and that she deserved more than a text. Nikki had sent Justin a text asking uh, him to take her back and give her a last chance. You're my everything, Nikki told Justin, but he ignored her text during the tell-all. Justin got to tell the world his side of the story. Justin uh, said that Nikki went back to America. They got into a big argument. He claimed that Nikki didn't have any patience and attacked him. I can't wake up every morning with my first thought being, how do I fix this relationship is a quote here. Justin said the distance and time gave him a chance to rebuild himself. He felt a wave of energy the next day. Justin said he finally felt free and he admitted that while he didn't feel trapped in the relationship, they broke up 10 times in a day and he was looking to put a stop to what was happening. He revealed that he wanted stability. Nikki accused Justin of playing the victim. So, um, you know, there's a bit of a back and forth between uh, these two. And uh, I really don't know, uh, you know, like what to what to make of it. Like, who's the bad guy? Who's the good guy? I, I, like I said, I think that initially the relationship was built on a lie. And so when the foundation is rotten to the core, it's built on a lie, then the whole thing is going to crumble. It always does. It never works out. And so the whole foundation here was built on a lie that just uh, Nikki basically lied to Justin about who she really was, that she was a trans woman. And it never worked out after that. It didn't work out the first time and it didn't work out the second time. However, I have to say that I also, from Justin's perspective, I don't really understand. I mean, he knew what he was getting himself into. He had 15 years to think about it, uh, about being with Nikki again, because he's already done that before. So what is he talking about when he talks about compromising his dignity and all of that? He knew exactly what he was getting into because he had experience. He's done it before. So I think it's a bit of BS on his side. What I think happened, guys, is this. I think Nikki paid Justin money to be on the show and pretend that they were a couple. This is what I think happened because I see no other reason for Nikki to be sending Justin money just like that. He was very obviously not into Nikki. And so I don't really understand what other reason there would be. I think Justin at the beginning, at the very least, reluctantly agreed to do the show with Nikki for fame and perhaps for money. I think we see a little bit of this with Angela and Michael. Angela sends Michael money, even though they're both doing the show, so that he doesn't go on social media. And like that, she doesn't risk him chatting with other women. And basically, she sends him money, uh, you know, for basically to control his life in a way. So I, that's what I think happened, uh, you know, uh, with Justin and Nikki. I think she was basically paying him, bribing him to appear on the show because Nikki so desperately, and this is obvious to everybody watching, wanted to have her five minutes of fame on 90 Day Fiance. So next, Justin was asked to explain why he sent uh, Nikki a text instead of facing her while he broke up with her. So Justin faced a language barrier, but tried telling the cast that Nikki always spoke over him whenever he tried to say anything. Nikki's friend and cast member Ashley Michelle asked Justin why. He said that Nikki had man vibes. Nikki was the woman he loved. Ashley reminded Justin that it was the absolute biggest insult. Justin said Ashley was spreading bad vibes during the tell-all. He said that it, 
if he feels man vibes, he tells it like it is. And that's what he saw. He got man vibes from Nikki. And that's, you know, I mean, Nikki used to be a man. And, you know, Justin can't get over that. He's still getting man vibes from her. I think he was really traumatized, you know, the first time around when he was lied. And basically Nikki was like, huh, you think that you can scream at me and you think you can argue me? Well, surprise, I used to be a man. And, and you know, I think when you do that, I, I really think that it's really hard to repair a relationship uh, once uh, you betray someone that badly. So Nikki said Justin took her on a two year ride. She revealed that after their split in the finale, she flew to Moldova again to meet Justin on his birthday. Nikki revealed that they made up after that. She said that she had a romantic time and Justin made love to her. Justin also put the ring back on Nikki's finger. Nikki confirmed that they were engaged again. She went back because she loved Justin and had history uh, with him. Justin, what was it that led up to you writing that text? Sean Robinson wanted to know. Justin revealed that Nikki had asked him about his ex-girlfriends. Justin's ex-girlfriend had reached out to Nikki on social media and told her that they met up several times. Nikki believed that Justin cheated on her after she applied for the K-1 visa. Justin ins insisted he was not cheating on Nikki because he was just using his hand to self-pleasure. Justin claimed he respected women and even chatted with his ex with respect. He said that he wasn't in love with Nikki at the moment because she was acting like his enemy and not his friend. And also... This is the big one, the huge shocker that nobody saw coming. Of course, I'm being very sarcastic here. Justin is just not attracted to trans women. And he said this many times, which is why this whole relationship was pointless. Justin wanted Nikki to behave more like a lady. Clayton Clark observed that Justin was not attracted to trans women. Do you think you were fully at ease with Nikki being a trans? Sean asked uh, Justin. He said he was. Nikki spoke about Justin not being a real man because he was not standing by her side as a king despite her doing everything that she needed. Nikki realized that she was never a queen for Justin. I'm trying. Justin assured Nikki. And Justin continued that if Nikki tried to behave more like a lady, everything between them would improve so did they get back together uh, after the tell-all no i don't think we're in a relationship at the moment he declared he said the door was still open for the future nikki's mom myrna joined the cast during the tell -all to ask justin if he was ever in love with her daughter myrna confronted justin about him saying that he was not gay and he was not attracted to trans women so he couldn't live with that in his head for the rest of his life that means i'm straight justin said before adding that nikki was his exception in the end, Nikki decided to pull Justin's K-1 visa. Justin still held on to hope that Nikki would come to him and ask him to take her back if she wanted a healthy relationship. Nikki was shown sending an email to her attorney about halting Justin's K-1 visa process. Nikki and Justin still appear to be broken up according to what they post on social. Nikki del deleted their joint Barbie and Ken IG account, which had sparked their split rumors even though the night they fiancé couple still follows each other on social media. So... That's the story for you guys. A little bit of what happened on the tell-all and a little bit my opinion in here. And, uh, you know, this was a very polarizing couple this season. And, you know, I, I, I think that sometimes, I, and I hate to be cynical or critical here, but sometimes when these couples, they just don't look like they match, sometimes they just don't. And it's just maybe PR. I think that's what it is. I mean, there is no reason... For Nikki to go back to like this whole relationship doesn't make any sense. I don't even understand why Nikki so desperately wants Justin there. He's obviously not attracted to her, and she obviously had a problem with that during the season. So why would she even consider going back to Justin? That's that's beyond me. I don't understand it, guys. If it's not for the show, if it's not because Nikki and Justin think that if they're together, they could come back on 90 Day Fiance. I don't understand the reason, and perhaps you guys do, and if you do, and if you have theories, please let me know in the comment section down below, because it is just flying over my head, I don't, I don't see it, and, uh, you know, Justin is uh, still in Moldova, he still has, uh, you know, some of these old pictures uh, that he posted here, so, uh, yeah, he hasn't come to the USA uh, this time around, but of course he was there last time around, and people still asking if he's still with Nikki. No, he is not. Uh, at least it doesn't appear to be the case. And he is kind of just living his life uh, on his own. And like I said, I just don't think this was ever a real couple. But never uh, underestimate what people will do to come on 90 Day Fiance. They will literally do anything. Uh, even if you're not into trans, you will pretend like you're into trans just to be on the show. If you're trans and you know that the man is not in love with you, 
you'll still pretend like there's a relationship because you so desperately want to be on the show. Of course, we've, we've seen this with gay, uh, with another gay couple, uh, Stephanie Stepanka Mateau and the Australian lady. Uh, both of them basically had boyfriends after uh, the Australian lady got a boyfriend after. And so that relationship was a complete disaster. And then we started questioning if they were ever in a real lesbian relationship uh, at all because you how do you go from being with a woman to being with a man so easily was it just for for cameras and so some of these relationships uh, end up being disasters but of course we have kenny and armando which is one of the best and nicest relationships uh you know that we've seen uh on the show and i think definitely the 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 best and um you know i, I guess healthiest same-sex relationship that we've ever had on a 90 day fiance so that's the video for today guys you guys let me know what you think about this whole thing in the comment section down below let me ask you guys this who do you guys view as the villain in this relationship is there a villain are they both villains uh, in this relationship uh, did they both do things that they shouldn't be doing were they both using each other that's a little bit where i'm kind of leading towards because you know when we talk about couples we always kind of try to figure out who's the villain, especially when there's a breakup. And it's not just me. This is what I see a lot of people on social media doing. It's always people take somebody's side and then try to villainize the other side and vice versa. It's kind of the trend with these two. So that's why I'm asking you guys. Do you guys think that there was just one villain in this couple? You guys think that Nikki was the real villain? I think that definitely the first time around that they were together, Nikki was the villain because you just don't lie about who you are as a person you just don't lie that you had a sex change and you used to be a man and now you're a woman you just don't lie about that that is a nasty disgusting level of betrayal that uh is just uh unthinkable to me and so definitely the first time around second time around i'm a little less sure and i think that there is a lot that's being said here that is not or at least there's a lot that's not being said such as why was the money sent you know, uh, from Nikki to Justin. I really think that there is more than meets the eye. I think that some of those payments were specifically to get Justin to do the show with Nikki because it's obvious Nikki wanted to do the show. But perhaps you guys see it differently. Let me know in the comment section down below, guys. I'd love to hear your thoughts about the, the storyline because this was one of the most puzzling storylines that we had this season. So please give the video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed. Hit that subscribe button for more content right here on the channel. And I'll see you guys very soon. Take care.